Hey everyone and uh, welcome to update number eight from the Physio Moves Canada project. We are here in uh, beautiful uh, northern Saskatchewan in Prince Albert National Park. I am uh, currently feeding mosquitoes and I'm also searching for some genuine Saskatchewan seal skin bindings so that I can do a, an unbelievable stunt when I get home. And if you get that reference you and I should be friends. Um, we are actually taking this weekend to uh, give, give me an opportunity to consolidate and reflect on some of the material that I've picked up over the past several weeks on this project. Thinking again about mobility, one of the things that continues to come up is the importance of uh, the psyche, of psychology in, in influencing people's mobility. You know, as physios, we often think about muscle strength, joint motion, uh, flexibility, that sort of thing. But uh, I continue to hear from clinicians about the importance of the psyche. Now, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that I've already talked about things like opportunity and motivation as important influences on individuals' mobility. I haven't really touched on the psyche part of it. One of the things I've learned, for one, of course, things like self-efficacy, things like being able to follow simple instructions and having the cognitive capacity to use a gate aid, for example, obviously influence one's mobility. One of the things I learned in a, uh, in a clinic in northern New Brunswick where the physio exclusively treats psychiatric residents of a, of a, specific, of a psychiatric hospital, um, that uh, even that uh, can influence mobility in as much as some of those residents uh, can't have access to their gate aid, for example, because if they're psychologically labile enough, they could use those aids as weapons. So this is just other examples of the way the psyche influences mobility. Now here's the point of this, and this is why I think this is an important conversation to have. If physios are going to brand ourselves as experts in mobility, then it seems uh, natural that we ought to learn more about psychology than we already do in our training programs. And again, I'm hearing this consistently from clinicians. So this begs the question, where do we want to go with our training in psychology? At what point do we stop being physiotherapists and start becoming counselors? If we start to add more psychological material into our training programs, what do we lose? A lot of interesting questions come up from this. I'd love to hear some of your points on or your thoughts on that. And uh, all for now. Cheers.